So as we start looking at options trading, I think it's really valuable to take a look at where options trading came from. So we're going to do a quick history of options right now. And the first thing you need to know is that options are a derivative. The instrument itself does not have value, but rather all of the value of the instrument comes from another instrument. In the case of stock options, that other instrument is going to be, of course, the underlying stock. But maybe you're trading futures options or forex options, and those options are also a derivative. It's just that it's derived. It's got its value derived from the underlying asset, which could be Forex, it could be futures, or whatever it is that you're trading. And so as a derivative instrument, in and of itself, it does not have any actual value. All of its value is derived from something else. That other instrument is called the underlying instrument. Again, if it's the stock you're looking at, it's called the underlying stock. If it's a currency pair, that would be the underlying instrument. If it's a futures contract, that would be the underlying instrument. Whatever the option is that you have the option on, the instrument uh, that, that you know, affects that is called the underlying instrument. Now, with stock options, that instrument is called the underlying security. If you're dealing with Forex options, it'd be the underlying currency. Uh, but underlying security is the technical term that we use. Now, there's lots of different types of derivatives when we think about the overall derivatives market. You've got things like the futures market. Those are all derivatives. We've got the options market, of course. We've got forward agreements. These are a type of derivatives. We've got swaps. We've got warrants. We've got all sorts of different types of derivatives. And the interesting thing is that you know people today say that, oh, derivatives, this new style of trading, it's just ruining the market. <laughs> Horrible idea. No, 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 no. Derivatives trading has been along, around for a long time. In fact, we can go all the way back to 600 BC where we start to see the first derivative trading taking place. Thales is credited as being one of the first to use derivatives. Way back at 600 BC, it was the olive presses. And so what Thales recognized is he recognized that there was going to be a greater than normal harvest of olives. And so he went and he actually bought what we would call an option. He bought the right to all of the olive presses. So whenever the huge harvest came, these people needed olive presses. Well, they had to contact Thales because he had the right to all of them. He didn't own them. He just had the exclusive right to them. That was basically an option. Another big example of, of derivatives trading was the tulip mania back in the 1600s. A lot of you have heard about the tulip mania. Uh, over in Europe, there was a time period where those little flowers that we call tulips, you don't think they're worth very much today, right? Well, way back then, people thought they were really, really important. And they actually had a huge tulip bubble where people were buying tulips, they were mortgaging their houses, and tulips got so expensive that they started trading options on the tulips, and then they would actually trade the option itself, just like we would trade options today. Uh, rather than just using the option to secure it, they would just trade a secondary market of options. And so that was another example of, of derivative trading that goes way, way back, and it's not an early form of trading. Another example of de derivative trading is the Japanese rice trading, the Dojima Rice Exchange uh, over in Japan in the 1700s, 16 and 1700s. Uh, this was a huge exchange where they were trading pieces of paper that today we would call basically a futures contract uh, based on the rice harvest. And so futures trading, derivative trading in general has quite a bit of history. Uh, there's actually more than what I've mentioned here, but there's quite a bit of history. Now, as we move forward into more of the modern era, historically, derivatives have been traded what we call OTC, or over-the-counter. They've not gone through a central exchange. And the primary use, whenever you looked at derivatives maybe the last couple hundred years, the primary use was for farmers and for agricultural markets. That's why the futures market is so well developed here in the United States, because the farmers and the ag markets, they needed a way to offset their risk. In 1848, Chicago came along, the Chicago Board of Trade, and they established the Board of Trade. Chicago is where a lot of this activity was taking place. A lot of the ag trade was taking place. And so they kind of centralized all the activities. And that started to create more standardization uh, with these, what we would today call futures contracts, so that the farmers and the ag developers and everybody could really, you know, have somebody to take their counter trade and offset their risk a little bit further. And then it was by 1965 when standardization started to be created here in the futures market. And with those standards in place, really futures trading as we know it today was starting to get very well established. So futures trading as a derivative here in the United States has a long history. We can go back again here to the 1800s and that's been established. Now options trading, that's a little bit of a different story. It was 1973 when the more established standardizations came along, uh, but it wasn't that, that late, more recent here I should say, that the 
uh, idea of options trading was here. Options trading had been going on for a long time, but it was over the counter, very much over the counter. It was the 1930s that the government actually gave Chicago Board the permission to go standardize, standardize the options market, but they didn't really take action on it until futures trading kind of hit a slump in the 70s and CBOT uh, came out in, and created the CBOE. Chicago Board of Trade created the Chicago Board Option Exchange in 1973, April 26th, 1973 to be specific. Now at that time, they initially only offered 16 products. There were only call options. There were no put options at the time. Uh, and then just a few years later, by 1977, that's when they started offering put options. And then the history of options trading started to accelerate from there, and it has just been ripping and roaring since then. So let's move forward to 1983. Uh, they began offering S&P index options. By 1989, they started offering options on interest rates. By 1993, CBOE started offering VIX. Uh, it was in 2005 when they started offering the weekly options. That's when they first issued out weekly options. And then moving forward, here we are today. And uh, currently, the world of options trades over 1 billion contracts a year. That is a lot of options that get traded. There's over 2,200 companies. You know, that's a pretty short history. So from 1973, starting with 16 companies, today over 2,200 companies trade options. Uh, there's 22 stock indexes. There's a, over 140 exchange traded funds now and they've quadrupled in volume over the last 10 years. In fact, if we take a look at this chart here, this is a picture of the average daily contract volume. So you can see way back here in you know, 2002, we were doing maybe a, a little over a million contracts a day, average volume. And here we are to 2008, that has quadrupled here. Uh, we're sitting up here around 5 million contracts. And here, 2014, moving forward, it just continues to get bigger and bigger. The interest in options trading is there for a reason. Options offer a lot of opportunity. They offer a lot of leverage. And for people who say that the options market is just a frou-frou market of derivatives, that is not true. There's a lot of reasons to be trading options, and it all really comes down to transfer of risk, which is what we're about to start talking about. So with that as a little history here, let's get over and start learning about options, why we use options, and really their first initial purpose, which was transferring risk.